Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, this in this video we will cover signals classification and its properties. The course title is Principles of Communication System. I am Dr. Zishan Kaleem from ECE Department, CUIUA Campus. Okay, let's discuss the lecture contents. In this video, we will cover signal classifications in detail. So, classifications of signal. Usually, signals are classified into several categories depending upon the criteria used for its classification. However, in this, we will just look at continuous time signals. What does it mean? I think you will be fam much familiar with the continuous time signal. If a signal is defined for all values of the independent variable time t, it is called a continuous time signal. For example, look at this picture. Here on x axis we have a time t and uh, here uh, signal values for example on the y axis this is a signal as x t sine phi t so on the y axis we have a value for each time t by calculating sine phi t so we get x t so on the y axis we have a x t so uh, for each value of time extent like for example starting from t equals to minus 2 to t is equal to 2 right so from minus 2 to 2 we have a value of at each time instant each time instant means very small interval of time for example 0 0.001 if we take like this for example so we have a continuous wave here and for each time instant we have a value of a x of t so this is continuous time sector since these signals vary continuously with time t and have known magnitudes for all time instants they are classified as continuous time signals as you can see from this picture that for each value of time t there are uh, magnitudes for each value of against the each value of time t so this is called a continuous time signal. Here we will discuss discrete time signals. In the previous slide, I mentioned that the time is continuous, then it is called a continuous time signal. Here as the name suggests, the discrete time, it means we have a time values taken at a discrete interval. Like for example here, minus 8, minus 7, minus 6, minus 4 minus 5 minus 4 minus 3 minus 2 so on up to 8 right so from minus 8 to 8 but the values taken at, at time to instant taken was just at some interval for example from minus 8 to 8 but with the step of 1 right 1 was the step taken so from minus 8 to 8 with a step of 1 if we put this values in the sign 0.25 pi k so here because the time is discrete so in discrete we usually represent by k so when you put this value for example x of minus 8 because k will be 8 here minus 8 here in this way you can calculate the magnitude of a discrete signal so sine 0.25 into pi into minus 8 right to minus 8 so after calculating this you will get some value here I think we will get 0 so we have a 0 here so x at minus 8 will be 0 Similarly, x at minus 7, there will be some magnitude and x at minus 6, it will be equal to 1, right? So, so on. So, this is called a discrete uh, time signal because here we have a uh, amplitudes at discrete values and the time taken was the discrete time instant, right? This is an example. 
Consider the continuous time signal x t is equal to sine pi t plotted in a figure given as a function of time t. Discretize the signal using a sampling interval of 0.25 se second and sketch the waveform of the resultant resulting discrete time sequence for the range k greater than minus 2 or less or equal to 9. So uh, what we have to do? We have a we have a time instant sampling time of 0.25 look at this and the signal is sine pi k so by substituting t equals to kt because this is a discrete time so t is replaced by k into sampling time why sampling time because we need to sample at some time instant so that time instant is fixed so 0.25 and uh, like the sampling period uh, so that period is 0.25 second and k represent exact time at which the sample is taken so t is a period right and k is the exact time at which sample is taken so we will replace t by kt here right sine pi t because we have a sine pi t so we replace t by kt and whereas the value of the t is 0.25 so the signal becomes x kt equal to sine pi k into 0.25 equal to sine 0.25 pi k right now we need to plot a discrete time signal so values can be 0 plus 1 plus 2 so on so we can start uh, here we have uh, an example taken at x is equal to minus 8 so minus 8t so sine equals to sine minus 2 pi which is 0 right similarly x minus 7 so x minus 7 t so uh, sine minus 1.75 pi is equivalent to minus 1.75 pi, pi, pi so it results in 1 by under root 2 similarly you can calculate for x is equal x1 x is equal to t so sine 0.25 pi so better to ignore this one and just focus on this equation right so we have a sine 0.25 pi on 1 instead of k we have a 1 so sine 0.25 pi similarly x2 so if you focus on this equation so just put instead of k put 2 here so sine 0.25 pi into 2 so it becomes 0 0.5 so result result in amplitude will be a 1 so on so these are all values are taken for example minus 6 to minus 1 and then 0 and then 3 4 5 6 7 8 so this uh, was a continuous time signal given to us and we need to convert into a discrete time signal so which look like this signal so this was an example to show that how we can discretize the continuous time signal into a digital or discrete time signal So there are different types of signal as we already discussed. Um, for example, in figure A, it is called analog and continuous type. Why is analog? In analog, the information is in every time instant. Like each part of the signal have a information, and you need to, for example, this. So each part of the signal has an information and it is called analog and with respect to time it is continuous. You can see that there is at each time instant there is a value so it is a continuous time. So it is called analog continuous time. The second one there are levels right. You can see that the levels in this way this this so on right these are levels. So this is, this is called digital and continuous time but you can see that the x-axis time is continuous there is no break in the time right so it is uh, with respect to time it is a continuous whereas with respect to shape or the amplitude it is digital because they have a levels and there are uh, only information residing in the levels not in each part of the signal so this is called a digital and continuous time the other one is the analog 
because you know that this is analog signal but it is discrete time analog and discrete time so this is analog but time instant we have taken at some time instant with a interval the interval is fixed right so we called it as a analog and discrete time the last one is the digital because you know there are levels right this one this one this one then again this this but digital and discrete so digital means the levels are there and discrete means we are taking at some time instant so discrete always means that we are taking at some time instant right like this was analog in nature but we are taking at some time instant not continuously so it is called a discrete so these are the four different types of a signal other term is a periodic and aperiodic signal you are much familiar of these terms because I think you are studying these courses several times. Previously, you studied different courses number of times and that you studied this concept. So, a continuous time is said to be a signal is said to be a periodic if it satisfies the following property. So, for a continuous time signal x of t, so it means that the time axis it is continuous and signal is a continuous with respect to time. So, it is it will be called a periodic if it satisfies the following property this is your x of t signal so if we repeat it after x t plus some time interval or time period t naught so it looks similarly like what it looks at x t then it is called periodic signal for example you are much familiar with the sine wave it's an easy example to explain so this is starting at zero right and ending at some value so if it is a called periodic if it repeats after time interval t again right so this and if again it repeats continue this and for example if we start from here and end here this is time t naught right this is time 2 t naught so on so if you look at this portion this is similar like this one so so on it will carry on so it is a called a periodic signal at all time t for some positive constant t naught the smallest positive value of t naught satisfies the periodicity condition equation 1.3 is referred to as a fundamental period of the t so we call it as a fundamental period so fundamental period usually mean that it is the uh, your basic period because uh, based on this you will have an harmonics like 2t 3t these are called harmonics fundamental is your basic time period likewise in a discrete time signal x of k for example is said to be a periodic if it satisfies the condition x k equals to x k plus k naught here we have a period k naught so k l time k for some positive constant k naught the smallest positive value of k naught that satisfies the periodicity condition so equation 4 1.4 is referred to as the fundamental period of xk so it is uh, called the fundamental period a signal that is not periodic is called an aperiodic or non periodic signal so figure shows some example of both periodic and aperiodic signals so the other time is the fundamental frequency that's the reciprocal of the fundamental period as we have a fundamental period t naught if we reciprocal take the reciprocal like this one 1 over t naught so it is called the fundamental frequency so fundamental frequency 1 over t naught for continuous time signal fundamental frequency for discrete time signal is 1 over k naught right so t naught and k naught are some are respectively the fundamental periods of continuous and discrete time the other term is angular frequency which is which can be calculated as 2 pi over t naught using fundamental period so it can be calculated as 2 pi over t naught so similarly it is for continuous time signal for um, discrete time signal we have a ohm naught equals to 2 pi over k naught instead of t naught here we have a k naught for discrete time signal 
A familiar example of a periodic signal is a sinusoidal function represented mathematically by the expression. So this is our periodic signal. This is a familiar, very much known example of a periodic signal as I plotted in the previous slide as well. A sine omega naught t plus theta. So this is a periodic signal which is repeating after some time interval t. The other important terms are deterministics and the random signal. You must uh, know these terms because uh, in wireless communication or any communication, these terms are very much popular. So deterministic, if the value of a signal can be predicted for all time t in advance without any error, it is referred to as a deterministic. What does it mean? For example, I have a sign right signal sign phi t if we have a signal sign phi t this is mathematical expression so can you predict the value of sine phi t yes of course by putting different values of time for example time 0 time 1 time 2 so when you put time 0 here you can get output exact value for example at time 0 you will get 0 right so it is exact like you know at time 0 we have an amplitude of 0 when you put sign uh, for example 1 so pi into 1 to so sine pi again you know the exact value so sine 2 pi you again know the exact value not uh, you are not confused but will be the value of sine party you can just take a calculator and calculate the exact value so these types of signals are called, can, are called deterministics because we can calculate the exact value in advance without any error because we know the exact value so there will be no error so it is referred to as a deterministic signal so the deterministic signal can generally be expressed in a mathematical or graphical form some examples of deterministic signals are as follows so these are called continuous time sinusoidal signals so x1 t 5 sine 20 pi t plus 6 so you put here time t and you can get x1 t so this is continuous time signal but it's deterministic so other one continuous time exponentially decaying sinusoidal so if you just put t here again and calculate 2 e minus t here as well so 2 e minus t sine 70 so you will get exact value of x2 of t so these are types of signal are called deterministic now the other time is random random signal random actually and wireless communication or the communication used as we have a wireless channel so we don't have a deterministic signal anymore in the channel side so the here comes the rent use of the random signal scheme so conversely signals whose values can't be predicted with complete accuracy for all time are known as the random signals you studied probability uh, so and other distributions uh, the only uh, reason for studying the probability and the distribution is to check the randomness or to model the randomness or the random behavior so this is where random signals are the randomness came so, so to model the uh, to know the what kind of randomness exists in the signals you have a probability density function so these random signals can just be characterized by a statistical measures such as mean standard deviations, mean square values, variance, etc. So, to measure the random signal, we can't exactly calculate the what will be the value of the random signal at time instant t. But by using some statistical measures such as mean standard deviations, mean square values, we can uh, calculate the its randomness or its output but it will not be exact as in deterministic signal. So here we can use the probability density functions and so on. So in electrical engineering, most meaningful information bearing signals are random signals, as I mentioned just while ago. So in digital communication system, for example, data is generally transmitted using a sequence of zeros and one. Thank you for listening. And for question answer, there will be a separate session and the exact time and date will be coming later on. Thank you very much.